In one of the last videos, we learned that we can linearly combine wave functions to form new ones. This is why they can be described as vectors in a vector space. If you, like me, wondered why the linear algebra lecture was mandatory for students of physics in their first year but analysis was not, quantum mechanics is the answer. At the moment we are still doing quite a lot of analysis, calculating derivatives and integrals all the time, but we will try to gradually get away from this formalism to a new, cleaner and more beautiful one. My video on measurement ended on the notion that the expectation value of an operator corresponding to a measurable quantity can be written as the sum of the probabilities that the system will collapse to an eigenstate of that operator multiplied by the corresponding eigenvalue. The probabilities are given by the absolute squared of an integral. Our goal here is to significantly simplify these expressions. For this, the notion of an orthonormal basis set is very helpful. We say that two wave functions are orthogonal to one another if the probability of finding one in the state of the other is zero. A set of normalized wave functions in which every two different wave functions are orthogonal to one another is called an orthonormal set. If we can linearly combine the wave functions to describe every state that interests us, we call it an orthonormal basis set. Eigenvectors belonging to different eigenvalues are orthogonal to one another. After watching this video you should be able to prove that, but for now you can just believe me. Eigenvectors belonging to the same eigenvalue can be linearly recombined to be orthogonal to one another, so we can safely assume that our eigenstates phi are an orthonormal basis set. Mathematically, we write p of phi j and phi k is delta j k, which means that this expression is 1 if the index j is equal to index k and 0 if it is not. This greatly simplifies our expressions. The state of our system can be expressed as a linear combination of the basis states. If we plug this into the expression for the probability to find psi in phi k, we find that only a single integral survives. If you've never worked with the delta symbol before, take a moment to convince yourself that this is the case. The probability is just given by the absolute squared of the prefactor. Not a single integral was explicitly calculated for this result. Let's come back to the expression of the expectation value and massage it a bit. This part is a bit technical, so be ready to hit that pause button. We can plug in the definition for the probability, the representation of the state psi, and then extract the coefficient ck. Because the basis was assumed to be orthonormal, the remaining integral gives us either 0 or 1, which are both numbers that do not change when we take the absolute square. We can therefore drop the square, but keep the integral. Now we work backwards a bit. The first thing to do is to pull the prefactors and the sums back into the integral. Knowing that j and k need to be the same anyhow, we can rename them a bit, just to better fit our needs. The next step is to use the definition of the eigenstate, but backwards. The last step is to put in the state psi of the system expressed in terms of the eigenvectors phi, also backwards. Have we won something? First off, I personally think this expression for the expectation value is more beautiful than the one we had before, which justifies its existence for me. But there's more. Although we extensively used the eigenvectors of the operator in the derivation, they have completely vanished in the final expression. Finding eigenvectors can be a very difficult task, but instead of doing that, we can now evaluate above expression. I promised you the direct notation, didn't I? Let's define a new symbol, which we call cat psi. It just gives us psi. What seems useless at first glance is complemented by an object called bra psi, which integrates the complex conjugate of psi and everything to the right of it until it encounters a cat. Together they make up a bracket, hence the names, but I'm well aware that it sounds as if I'm talking about felines and underwear. In Dirac notation, the expectation value can be neatly written as bra psi o cat psi. This is precisely the reason why the angle brackets were chosen for the notation. Now we have a really short notation for writing an expectation value, but the Dirac notation can do so much more. For example, the overlap of the wave function psi with phi j is just given by bra phi j cat psi. 
At this point, I do not expect you to fully grasp how much easier Dirac's notation will make your life in the quantum realm, but I hope that you will learn to appreciate it over the course of the next videos. Until then, enjoy life if you can, and don't be ashamed if you can't.